Today, I'll be showing you and talking to you about Pieta's reproduction of the Lamatt Revolver. I'm Dustin, and you're watching Guns of the West. I have had numerous requests to show this gun, the Lamatt revolver, and I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing Lamatt wrong. You'll just have to bear with me. That's what I'm going to be calling it, and that is what it's very often called. Anyway, this one is not actually mine. I've never had an interest in purchasing one of these, to be honest. I think they're a little odd, but a kind viewer was nice enough to send his out to me. So I'll be doing a few videos with it, sending it back. And then today's video, I just want to tell you a little about it and give you a visual overlook of it. It was created by Dr. Francois Alexander Lamat, and again, forgive me on these uh, pronunciations. And I believe, if I remember, I was created in 1855, patented the following year. And it was patented in the United States, but also in a handful of European countries. So you could say this was a pretty well-protected design. Now, I believe the first prototypes actually came out over in Belgium. And those prototypes, along with some of the early models, would have looked a bit different from this one. For example, the trigger guard here would have had a big spur on it that you could hook a finger onto, and this entire loading lever assembly was on the other side, and it was a loading lever you would pull down, somewhat similar to a Remington or a Colt, whereas on this one, it pulls up to load a chamber. Well, let's go ahead and just take a look at this gun here. So let's start at the back and we'll work our way forward and look at some of the peculiar features of it. Back here, of course, you've got your grip grip frame and you may be able to tell on camera that is a very wide angle grip. On the originals over in Belgium, they were much tighter and curved down, I should say, somewhat like a Colt or a Remington, which I think was better. As I hold this one, that is a very unnatural point of aim, but we'll see how it does in other videos when I get it out and shoot it. I mean, it has a little lanyard ring right here, and on the earlier models, that was just threaded into place. It could be removed, but you can see that this one, and this is correct for later models of the Lamatt, this is a permanent feature of the grip frame. Uh, coming up forward, take a look at that hammer. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? You've got the main hammer, which is somewhat like a Colt hammer. It does have a rear sight in it, like the Colts did. But what is that? Well, look what happens when I push that up. That drops another piece of the hammer down, and you'll notice there is a nipple here in addition to the ones on the revolver. The reason for that is because this revolver is both a 44 caliber revolver and a 20 gauge shotgun. And the shotgun portion has its own nipple down there that you saw. Now, when I say 44 caliber and 20 gauge, it should be noted the originals were not in those uh, configurations. The original had a 42 caliber barrel of 42 caliber chambers and I believe it was available in 36 though I could be wrong about that uh, but definitely 42 but if you think about it it would be hard to find lead balls and other components for a 42 revolver so Pieta is just making it in a 44 and this shotgun the originals would have been in an 18 or at least close to something that would be like today's 18 gauge and again getting components for that not impossible but it's easier with a 20 gauge and so that's what Pieta makes it in but visually though it looks really about the same as the originals it's not really easy to tell that those are not the same caliber and gauge the cylinder here is a nine shot cylinder you can probably notice by how close the nipples are to each other that's a lot more than just your normal six shooter coming forward a little bit more this pin here is actually for disassembling the gun. The barrel does not have a wedge like a Colt or just a simple you know, pin that you would pull out like on a Remington. Instead, it is threaded on. If I pull this pin out, you can see that now that entire assembly can turn. But the interesting thing is, at least to me, it's not threaded back here. The threading is here at the edge, at the end rather, of the shotgun barrel. Let's go ahead and take that off for just a moment and give you a look at that. All right, so that all slides off, and you can see that the shotgun barrel serves as what would be the arbor on a Colt revolver that the cylinder turns on. And I don't even have to pull the hammer back to get the cylinder off, because you may have noticed there are no stops in the cylinder. 
Instead, it has these very small holes along the back, and what stops it in place is a little pin right there. And I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with Pieta for going to such detail as to include that, because even Lamatte stopped using that design and started using notches in the back of that cylinder with a little sort of a wedge that would pop out, because this wasn't as reliable. But good on Pieta for paying enough attention to detail to actually have that design. Cylinders rotated by a hand, very similar to the Colts and the Remingtons. And that's basically the uh, you know field disassembly of the gun. Let me put it back together for you. Slide that back over the shotgun barrel, lock it into place. Put the barrel over the shotgun barrel, and as soon as it gets down here, I can start threading it back on until it's obviously not going to make another turn. That's right there. So now I just make sure, see it's off center now, but if I go ahead and line it back up, then I just press that pin back in, and the gun is reassembled. Well, let's take a look over here at this loading lever assembly. That's pretty interesting, too. You can see that it has a little clip that holds it into place right up there. And, interestingly enough, this is held into a notch right there so it doesn't slide out. But if you lift the lever up, that does actually slide out. And what that is, is a ramrod for your shotgun barrel right there. So pretty interesting gun. I still find it a bit odd. I'm not going to say this is one of my favorite uh, cap and ball revolvers by any means, but very interesting. Uh, so make sure you stick around with me as I get out and shoot it and subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you can be notified of that. Well, to load it, you would pull the hammer to half cock like on other revolvers you're familiar with that frees the cylinder. So the loading procedure on the Lomat is really generally the same as a Colt or a Remington, just done with different parts. And then you would load from this side, where on the Colts and Remingtons, you would pour your powder over here, load your ball or your bullet. That's all done over here. And rather than being done at the bottom like those other guns, it's done up high up here. So with it on half cock, you know, you would have added your powder, you add your ball, and then this lever is lifted up. And you can see that that uh, little plunger, very small plunger, goes into the chamber and presses the ball down like on the other guns. But look at the design of that. See how that wobbles? And I don't really see that it can be made much better. It seems a little weak to me. I'm actually, I'm actually a little bit worried about it. I'll be very careful in how I load this gun. And it's even my understanding on the originals, it was very common for that to break. And there are lots of photos of originals that don't even have it because they broke. So I'll be very careful with that. I'd recommend you do too if you're shooting one of these. And then uh, let's come back here again for just a moment. So right now the hammer, I just pulled it to full cock. And you can see that as that comes down, that's going to hit this nipple up here on the cylinder, discharging the 44 caliber uh, charge. But remember, if I flick this lever up, now as the hammer comes down, it's going to hit that one setting off the shotgun. So you could carry around nine shots of 44 plus one shot of 20 gauge shotgun loaded with buckshot or birdshot, whatever you needed. And I should mention too, another difference between the early ones and this one, the early ones did not have that little lever. You actually had to reach up here and pull that section down. It's not hard, but it's a little awkward. So the later ones that was fixed with this little lever that's very easy to operate. Well, like I said, make sure you stick around, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you can see the videos when I get out and shoot this gun. Today, I just wanted to give you this little overview of it. It is a very, very peculiar revolver. Like I said, that's, never why, or that's why I've never bought it, but I'm very grateful to my kind viewer who sent it out and also sent out this book, Lamatt, The Man, The Gun, so that I could take a little time and learn about it and take a look at that in that picture you can see some of the things i was talking about like the little spur on the uh, trigger guard and you can see the loading assembly on the right side in the position where it would pull down but yeah don't forget to click that uh, like button subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos on this and other videos in general and if you look in the description you'll be able to see where to find me on social media as well as where to find great uh, or as well rather as where to find great guns of the west products thank you so much for watching